So if we consider a universe with only one spatial dimension, we are going to see that it's only possible to have neighbors on our left side or on our right side. So maximum of two neighbors. And if we expand that universe to be two dimensional, we will see that it's possible to have maximum of eight neighbors. Because now we can also have neighbors on top of us and below us. And furthermore, we can have diagonal neighbors on a two dimensional universe. Going further, if we expand to three dimensions, it's possible to have up to 26 neighbors. And we can see that the relation between this maximum number is three times the previous universe plus two. And this is easy to understand because we can all know, always have the same neighbors as we did. Also on a one additional direction. So between one and two dimensional neighbors, we have, have added the dimension up and down. And furthermore, we can be neighbors with the one cell which was previously on our spot. So that is the plus two in the formula. Now, if we expand further to four dimensions, we can have up to 80 neighbors. In 5D, 242 neighbors. And finally, in 6D, we can have 728 neighbors. So that's already quite a lot of neighbors. And here you are seeing a game of life simulation of just that. 6D universe with up to 728 neighbors. And we can see when we simulate this kind of universes that the possibilities of life are rapidly expanding as we add these dimensions. But it's not always easy to live in such multidimensional universes because if we use some simple rule for life here and we see the simulation go, what usually happens is that it's very easy to expand in a multidimensional universe. But if the space for expansion runs out, it's very possible that the simulation is just going to die out. And this is because the expanding universe no longer has any possibilities for life because the expansion is the only way to survive. But here we are actually having a universe which is viable for life. And even if there is no room for expansion, this universe would stay alive. If we look at the rules, we have so that cells with one neighbors, three neighbors, six neighbors, and finally nine neighbors are getting born in the six dimensional game of life universe. And we can even remove some of these rules. First, we remove the one neighbor rule and we will see that some possibilities for life will disappear. This universe is going to lose a flavor so to speak, and some parts of the expanding universe are going to be darker because it's no longer possible to survive with only one neighbors. And this is also going to have a big effect for the expansion of the universe because this rule, cells with one neighbors getting born, is very good for rapid expansion because diagonally you are easily going to have one neighbor and then you can just expand outwards. And as I said before, this is a kind of rule which is good for expanding, but it can easily die out if the space for expanding runs out. You can now see that on the borders of the universe, there's more darkness and maybe the universe is not expanding as rapidly. Let's remove another possibility for life. And now only cells with six or nine neighbors are going to get born and we will see that there is going to be even more darkness in the universe as another way of life becomes impossible. And I can already say that this universe is going to survive because the number six is quite good for a six dimensional universe. When we study universes of different spatial dimensional count, 
We will see that there are some key numbers which are very good for life in such universes. And it also depends on the number, what kind of behavior you are going to see in the universe. For example, in a three-dimensional universe, the number four is very good for movement-like actions. And if we expand to a 4D universe, the number eight is going to be good for a movement-like action. Because in some ways, the number eight, funny green face here, by the way, in some ways, the number four and eight are similar in corresponding to three-dimensional and four-dimensional simulations. For reasons, it's a little bit hard to go in such a short video, but this is the case, trust me on this. Maybe I will make a video about that in the future. And if we expand that, one might think that maybe in a five-dimensional universe, the number 12 or maybe 16 would be similar, but at some point this kind of logic usually breaks because there's going to also be another kind of behavior which emerges in the more dimensional universe we have created. Now finally, let's also remove the number six from this universe. And now I can already say that this universe is a dying universe, but it will be able to survive for a while because the number nine is imprinted in some ways in the universe and it's going to have possibilities for life with this number for a while but it's not going to be sustaining because the number nine is not going to be able to sustain, sustain the life for very, very long because now the universe which was created on the previous step no longer has many means for life because the number nine is simply not enough to sustain life here. Now we have a decision to make whether we let this universe die or will we save it. And I think this is pretty nice looking universe, so I'm not going to let it die, but instead I'm going to give it another chance with a number, let's say number four. I'm not sure if this is going to work though, because number four and number nine may not bear enough relation with each other to survive, but let's give it a go. Now, the next step of the universe, what it's going to look like, it seems like it's completely dark, so the beautiful universe actually died out. That's a shame. But well, sometimes this happens in life. If you don't understand the universe, you might just kill it, if you don't tweak it correctly. Well, happily we don't have such powers yet. But this is all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. And bye.